Two years ago, we had a problem. We were a small team of developers based in Norway. And we wanted to be able to communicate with friends and family in other parts of the world. But getting everyone to install the same video chat application was just too painful. So we decided to build our own solution. With three students in just two weeks, we made the Appearing web app. Messaging and video chat, no plugins, no installation required. We used WebRTC, a set of open source APIs for real-time communications. Only one problem. As our web app got popular, we soon discovered that WebRTC was not supported across all browsers. Some of our friends wanted native apps for their phones and tablets. So after all that wonderful webiness, we realized that in the real world, we'd have to build native apps. But it turned out that wasn't a problem. WebRTC has great support for native iOS and Android apps. I'm Daginge. And I'm Svein. If you're a web developer like me, hold on to your hat. By the end of this video, you'll have resources to get started with WebRTC on iOS and Android. As we'll show you, the APIs for iOS and Android parallel those for the web. WebRTC is an open standard for secure peer-to-peer -peer communication of audio, video, or data. In the past, a lot of real-time communication ran via a centralized service. That was inefficient and expensive. WebRTC enables apps to communicate directly from device to device, peer-to-peer, -peer, without going via a third-party server. This means communication with WebRTC comes at very little cost to you as a developer. Since WebRTC is built on peer-to-peer -peer communication, most of the data cost is left to the network. So, WebRTC works peer-to-peer, -peer, but you can't simply shout into the internet, I want to exchange streaming data with my friend's computer! WebRTC apps need to negotiate a connection. In order to set up a call, WebRTC apps first need to exchange connectivity and media metadata. Stuff like network addresses and audio and video capabilities. This process is called signaling. For signaling, you can use any two-way messaging system. We chose WebSocket with Socket.io. Once a call is set up, media flows directly between peers. Having built a signaling mechanism, the next step in your WebRTC app is to get video from the camera and audio from the microphone. On the web, we use the navigator.getUserMedia method to access streams from the camera and microphone. The equivalent on Android is Video Capture to fetch audio and video streams and Video Renderer to display video. Video Capture is a neat wrapper around the camera API, allowing WebRTC to create a media stream. On iOS, RTC Video Capture and RTC Video Renderer do the same job. Once we get media streams from the camera and mic, we need to set up a network connection to transmit the streams to other users. To do this on the web, we have RTC Peer Connection, the JavaScript API for audio and video communication. This is the core of WebRTC. The Peer Connection API does a lot. Signal processing, codec handling, peer-to-peer -peer communication, security, bandwidth management, and so on. On Android, the equivalent API is Peer Connection. And on iOS, it's RTC Peer Connection. WebRTC opens up communications to all of us. Open technology, free for developers, free for end users. WebRTC enabled us, with a team of only eight, to build a competitor for mainstream video chat applications. But WebRTC enables a lot more than just video chats. Along with high performance audio and video, WebRTC's peer-to-peer -peer architecture enables fast file sharing and data communication. Peer-to-peer -peer means less network hops, resulting in lower latency. We've seen WebRTC apps for music collaboration, file sharing, health services, robots, and even gaming. To learn more, check out the resources at g.co slash WebRTC. You'll find detailed guides, sample code, demos for Android and iOS WebRTC development. Goodbye. Goodbye.